views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from L.A., and today is August the 2nd, 2017. It is a Wise Wednesday. We're going to have a live show with you. Uh, coming up, Brother Davis is in studio, ready to go, and we will definitely have a Wise Wednesday for you all. So, looking forward to that. Everyone, continue to support Black Talk Radio Network and all of the programs that are brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. Very, very important. If you would just go to Black Talk Radio Network's website of blacktalkradionetwork.com, and once you're there, you will be able to see the, the icon for donations it is the holding hands there with the green background. Just uh, click on that, and that will prompt you from the homepage as to how you can give some of your financial energy to support the network and keep this network growing and going. Very, very important because it's not, there is no other sponsors that this network has other than you. So very important that you give whatever it is that you can give. Also, Scotty and Max are going to be going to D.C. And there's a fundraiser that we're having uh, for that as well. And it's right there at the New Abolitionist Radio. Donate to help Carolina uh, abolitionists contingent trips to, oops, to D.C., so you can see uh, the picture of Scotty and Max that are right there. Just click on that, uh, which I will have forgot to do and I needed to do yesterday and I forgot to do, but I will be doing it uh, doing uh, Brother Davis's show on Wise Wednesday. Uh, so definitely hit that. And then also you can support the network by being a part of the social media network known as BTR Community. J- just on the homepage, you can see uh, BTR Community it is the capital uh, B with the black background. Click on that and be a part of the social media outlet known as BTR Community, where you can engage in all of your social media activities without being adversely affected in a more holistic way. And it's only $24 a year. That is extreme. It's, it's you know, it's it's really on, you know, on the pennies. It's not even a dollar a day or uh, anywhere near that. It's, it's um, I have to break that down. It's, what, uh, what 10 cents a day? So... Uh, for that, and that will support the network in itself. So, excuse me, it's it's really um, uh, two dollars a month. Is is that's all it, it is? It's two dollars a month. And then you could break that down uh, for a thirty day period or thirty one day period and see what the math is. All right. So join BTR community. It's uh, one place where you don't have to worry about your identity being sold to anyone else. Many of us don't realize how adversely that affects us and and what that entails. So definitely, definitely be a part of that. Also, if you would like to acquire real money, you can go to Prosperity Mint, and that's where you, even though you're not paid as a lady and a gentleman or paid as a king or queen, nor you're paid for which in value to which you give, you're actually given coupons 
depreciating coupons where your valuable energy is is being taken in. And as soon as we understand that correlation and how important that is, we will require an asset for an asset, something of value for something of value, not something of value for something that's worthless. You can save in that way. Until then, you can do that by going to Prosperity Mint, P-R-O-S-P-E-R-I-T-Y, M-I-N-T dot com and make sure before you engage in your purchases, uh, just uh, email info at prosperitymint.com. Someone will get with you to ensure that you understand the, the buying process and how to engage in it because there's some things, very important things that you need to know. Okay? So definitely you could do that there. Also, uh, everyone, there's a, a, a crowdfunding campaign, campaign with GoFundMe uh, campaign for my man, Michael Emmanuel is on our website. Excuse me, not our website. It's there on our page in BTR community. And you can, for that one, you can go to gofundme.com forward slash Sam Union Yankee 5P slash 3. Five zero zero is a GoFundMe campaign for Michael Emanuel, who was re- recovering from chemo chemo uh, therapy because he had germ cell cancer, and just wanted to help him and the family have his body to 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 get some of the things that is need, some of the 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 minerals necessary minerals uh, to fortify his body and to help detox from the chemotherapy and to help in assisting his body to get back into a strong uh, to strengthen his immune system so that his uh, the essential minerals so that his body will be able to stay in remission from the cancer or in at least to help in that. So uh, be a part of that GoFundMe campaign. Greatly appreciate all of you that have and what you're giving. Let's do it, okay? Uh, to, let me see before we get going. So that is uh, what we're, we're doing there. So we're going to jump into what's in the news, and we'll get straight into uh, the show with uh, Brother Davis. First article that I posted came from the Sacramento Bee, and it says that the uh, basically in this article, it says, well, my commentary on this is that if you think the system cares about frogs, you've been buying a bridge in Brooklyn with your 401K plan because this article is is talking about how they are they want to uh cordon off 1.8 million acres in rural California in the Severa, Sierra Nevada uh area they want to cordon off uh 1.8 million acres as a critical habitat for frogs and in, in the ranches and so what that means is that season that that property that's not that's not what they're. Uh, that's not what it's all about. It's about the gold. It's about what's in the Sierra Nevada that is going to be critical. It's about China requiring this because the U.S. is in receivership and they don't want that gold to be mined. And that's what this is all about, in my opinion. And so this is how they hide. This is the asymmetrical way to trick people into doing this. And this is how they hide a lot of things, history, and hide other things. So check that out very, very, uh, to me, very, very significant um, in that. So check out that article. Next article I posted from express.co.uk, which is a, a British publication, Ready for War, U.S. sends hundreds of troops to South Korea as North Korean tensions escalate. Check out that article. I think it's only a matter of time. Um, and it's going to come uh, very quickly, very swiftly. It will be no build up other than the build up. The build up is happening now and it's going to spring on everyone. And that is going to cause some real obstacles, uh, more than obstacles in the physical realm for a lot of people. Um, and it will be something that will cause some problems for you in your daily life. But if you prepare for it, you can be in a better position to have options that will serve you, your family, and the overall community. So check out that article. Next article from Newsweek, and it says, uh, Jasmine uh, Reskin, a freshman, a freshman in Congress, has a plan to remove a crazy president. Check out that article uh, from Newsweek. Next article from Reuters. 
um, posted this one and came out of Reuters. Trump closed the decision on addressing the Chinese ch- trade practices. This is the current, this is the trade war, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to, to really, really, uh, spike and cause for some major, major, uh, problems. This is the purge that will go into the, the, the untied states of America. Building, building, building. Uh, and we're gonna finish the show that we had on, on, uh, yesterday. Uh, very, very important. Also, I just want to say Scotty had a phenomenal uh, show um, with uh, Kim, the mother of uh, Dewan, the the young man that uh, actually took a plea deal that gave him for, uh, 40 years plus 15 um, in a murder of what I call rape by fraud uh, case. And we're going to uh, actually invite um, the young man's uh, mother, Kim, on uh, Tando Radio Show, um, and we're going to start to put an action plan together, some things that can be done, and to bring more awareness to this so that this cannot happen again, and also to help Dewan, uh with his overall uh, case and, and his, in my opinion, him being victimized, politically victimized by the state of Mississippi. And this is not against anyone in the transgender community. This individual was dishonest and fraudulent, not saying that transgenders are dishonest and fraudulent. But see, that's what society wants to make that a case because that's what they always do to facilitate their agenda. And I would just say this to those in the heterosexual and the transgender community, this system cares nothing about you at all. It is only going to use you for their purposes. And the only thing that will stop them from that is you. This, there are things that are absolutely wrong and absolutely incorrect and we can't have these type of things. No one should be victimized by someone else. Your freedom ends where someone else's begins. So if you are, uh, doesn't matter what your preference is, you, ha- you should have the ability to live your life, and you, you do, uh, without any interference from anyone else. But the moment that you invoke yourself on someone else, that's the spirit of the universal law that is wrong. And this individual that did this to this young man. That individual was wrong. They were invoking, and they just happened to use that, and is no different as anyone else fraudulently taking advantage of anyone else in, other, in any other form or fashion. So this is something that we must, must stand against, uh, and it's not something that uh, we will take lightly, and it's not a matter of an ultimatum this is a matter of decisions that we will not allow this to be prevalent in protection of all people. That's what this is all about. So no one should be exploited by an individual. And then because of that, uh, be classified so to, to have even more further uh, uh, separation between the overall human species. So definitely don't want that to happen, and we're going to do everything that we can. Looking forward to assisting um, in this. So, next article. We're going to uh, continue on. Next article. I posted this one from the Chicago Tribune.com. U.S. plan trade probe over China's demand for tech uh, transfers. This is a part of the uh, actual trade wars that's going to be spiking up. This is a very, very important story. Got this one from Sputnik News and my commentary from this one. This ain't good. Pentagon detects North Korean submarine activity. Ejections test. Military intelligence gets short. The U.S. Defense Department detected highly unusual levels of Korean submarine activity just days after the uh, North Korea launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. And what, what's, what this is being saying now, is this true? Don't know. Do, you, do I trust? No, absolutely not. But what this is is going to do, this is how the, the propaganda for uh, confrontation that goes global starts. If they say that North Korea is now testing by way of their submarines, you can guarantee that there is going to be a military confrontation and a military response from the U.S. in this situation. If it's true or not, that is going to happen. And I would just say this in this whole stance. The U.S. 
has, in my opinion, is overstepping it just from a government system standpoint. The U.S. is overreaching its bounds. North Korea has the right to a Second Amendment to protect themselves, just as the U.S. encountered and uh, developed these weapons. And But to see the difference is that the U.S. did use them, that, and that in itself was an, a terrorist act from all forms of the definition of terrorism. So now the terrorists don't want other countries to be able to defend themselves. They just want to be subjugated, uh, be able to subjugate at will other countries. So, and they've been doing that for years. Check out that that uh, actual uh, article. Next article, this one comes from the institution. Oh man, I messed up, I hit it real quickly. The Institution Risk Analyst. Check out this article that uh, we posted there. And this one is about, oops. One second. Have a little problem. Uh, Europe's banking dysfunction worsens. The dysfunction uh, problems of, of European banking is getting much, much worse. And that means that is all banking. Europe, there's no difference between the so-called uh, territorial claims of Europe and the territorial claims of the United States when it comes to banking. It's all in one and the same. Check out that article. Uh, you should need to know. We'll be covering some of that. Next article from Strategic Culture, Russia, Belarus joins drill used as pretext for NATO war preparations. Check out that article. The whole world is getting ready for it. Next article from uh, Natural Society. The EPA Inspecting General is investigating whether EPA officials colluded with Monsanto, what I call Monsanto. Of course they did. Check out that article. Next article I posted from Anti-War. Close all military bases on foreign sto soil. Agree with that wholeheartedly. Next article comes from the South China Morning Post. Japanese frogman approaches uh, China's warship at Djibouti. Check out that article. Next article comes from Russia Insider. Putin should thank the U.S. for sanctions. Russia and Iran ain't $2.5 billion deal. Oh, believe me, Russia does thank uh, the U.S. from that standpoint of the system uh, of, of that. They, they thank them for so many things. It, it's a lot of things that actually put Russia in a position, and the sanctions are actually not what people think. The sanctions are, are actually protecting Russia so that after the debt paradigm is destroyed the asset paradigm will 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 be invoked in russia china and all of the BRIC nations within the BRIC nations will be strategically in place to be the economic trendsetters of the future and the u.s will not be a part of that nor will its u.s citizens that won't be actively engaging in an asset-based economy it'll be too late so uh Check out that article. Next article from Press uh, TV, which is a Iranian uh, publication. Uh, Press TV. Saudis asked U.S. Drug, judge judge to drop 9/11 lawsuit. Next article. Uh, L.A. Ramon posted this one. Nissan launches anti-union uh, blitz ahead of U.A. pivotal U.A. U.A.W. elections. Check out that article. Um, and that this is, has a lot of, of, of what's going to be going on as the slave, as the slave concentration camps and the sweatshops will be expanding in the U.S. They're going to be bringing all kinds of factory jobs, but their cost of living, they will not be paying you anything. This is why you hear them talking about c companies are coming back. Yeah, they're going to be coming back, but they're not going to be coming back to pay you anything. This is a part of the receivership that the U.S. will be under. Next article, uh, L.A. Ramon posted this one. Russia says U.S. relationships getting worse. Uh, and this one was out of Apple News. Uh, L.A. Ramon also posted uh, this one. Uh, Apple News, Florida's fights against political indoctrination in school texts. Very, very important. This is what I mean. Politically correct is always morally wrong. Check out that article which the young man uh, in Mississippi uh, was actually victimized by. That was a political agenda that, that actually prosecuted, prosecuted and actually cut that deal uh, for, for him to be used as a political, uh, uh, as in a political example for a political agenda, which is always morally wrong. 
Next article, uh, Rise posted this one from the conservative force. Japan stands with Trump on North Korea. And this is all the signs of the things that are going to be letting you know that they're going to be uh, invoking. So that is what's in the news. So we have Brother Davis in uh, queue. So we're getting ready to go into Wise Wednesday. And today's show is the sensory art of awareness. How you need to, to tune your senses and very, very important, and glad Brother Davis is in, invoking this actual show here on Wise Wednesday. So with that being said, Brother Davis is in queue, ready to go. And if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Hit star, star, um, and then um, you'll be up. I will be back and forth on, if I see you on um, on the board, I will let Brother Davis know, but if you're there for a little bit and, and you don't hear me uh, say anything to Brother Davis, is because I'm not on it, I'm listening, um, but I'm not uh, on the board. So just say excuse me and let Brother Davis know uh, that you have a question or comment. So without further ado, we're going to bring up our good brother, Brother Davis, and we thank Brother Davis for doing Wise Wednesday. Always, always happy to have that. So thank you, Brother Davis. Welcome to the good show. Day. Good evening. Good yeah, evening. Good uh, evening, yeah. brother. Um, hold on one second, Brother Brother Davis, real quick. I heard um, it was L.A. Ramon. Yeah, go ahead, L.A. Ramon. Go ahead. Hey, didn't mean to cut in. I want to take advantage of the opportunity. Two things I want to point on. Um, Scotty was asking about – I mean, Scotty was pointing out to DeWanye's mother last night on that show about um, – a. a, a a federal statute that I had passed on to another guy on uh, New Abolitionist Radio. That um, is, do you mind if I share that real fast, Lee? Just it's just a link to where Scotty can find that information, and particularly about that young man's money. If, if I'm reading on it now, he may be able to still get his money while he's in prison because he was. Um, I'm pretty. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Brother Davis uh, wouldn't mind on Wise Wednesday at all because I know that Brother Davis in, is in full support of the family. Uh, and, well, I won't say that, because, but I know. But I'll let Brother Davis uh, say that. But um, uh, Brother Davis, is is it all right if L.A. Ramon um, just shares that with us real quickly? Absolutely. Yes, go ahead, okay. go ahead, uh, Ramon, and thank you for bringing us up. This is what, this is something that we definitely need to be doing. Go ahead, uh, Ramon. Okay, um, I, this, the the the, art, the name of this particular one I found is called the Federal Statutes Imposing Collateral Consequences Upon Conviction, and it covers the area of uh, voting, office holding, jury selection, licenses, employment, federal benefits, and immigration. And particularly, they have a section on there for military people who have been convicted, um, where their pensions can still be, they can still draw pensions for children or spouses. I don't know how that would work for his family if he doesn't. But I just wanted to uh, share that. Once again, it's called Federal Statutes Imposing Collateral Consequences Upon Conviction. You can find that on justice.gov. And again, that's justice.gov. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Brother Dave. Thank you, Ramon. That's the that's the thing that's going to be critical for this whole thing is that you have to uh, legal precedence is everything uh, with legal recourse. So, and this young man, um, I think there's a plenty of of legal uh, there's precedence that's been set, um, and so th there are some things that um, you know that that should be the step that needs to be taken in going forward with this young man. So let's get into Wise Wednesday with Brother. Davis, Brother Davis, thank you, and we're all ready to go. Not a problem. Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Davis coming at you. It's another Wise Wednesday. And uh, I wanted to start the show off tonight by putting to you about what was the nature that's available to us, and that is animals. Animals have an extrasensory perception that allows them to feel vibrations deep within the universe or way out in the cosmos long before they have an immediate effect here on Earth, or on us, so to speak. Uh, one of the, the reasons why the uh, cat in Egypt was held in such high regard, because literally, he kept the Egypt from starvation from time to time because of his extra sex perception. Now, what is unique about that is that that is an animal. Now, why do I point that out? Because the animal 
is only working on the basis of instinct. And one of the unique things about it is that he cannot develop that instinct. That has to be a part of his inheritance, his birthright. But everybody shares a lot of things. The, when we talk about the uh, universe in itself, we're talking about everything it encompasses is connected. But a lot of times we are not aware because of what we're going through of our connection and the power of our connection. Well, this is what tonight's show about is about. How do we fine-tune our sensors, or how do we get the things that will offer us a greater dimension of our sensors to work to our advantage? Uh, I believe that because we're connected to the universe, we have so many powers that because of our Western education, we cannot begin to understand the magnitude or the limit. Because, see, uh, Westernism teaches us boundaries. And it teaches us boundaries so that we will know them. But it also teaches us boundaries so we can keep our minds in a state of psychological control. I know a lot of people are saying, well, no, not really. I mean, I feel like I could do anything I want to. They want you to feel like you can do anything you want to. But they also want you to understand that you have laws in place that will not allow you to do anything you want to. What is unique about that is that at this particular time in the era of man, he's even starting to remove those boundaries. And you've seen that in things like um, the story preceding us. Uh, this is just a person who deceived someone else into believing they were what they were not. Now, understand how I said that because America has been built on deception. It is deception that has Europeans thinking this is their land. It is deception that has Europeans thinking that because they can kill, they have a right. It is deception that has other people believing that they have a right to control because of their ability to kill. That is unnatural. Actually, if you really want to get down to it, killing the way they tell you is done as unnatural. But, if you believe it, it's functional for them. That, i.e., so is the purposes of a lot of things that they're doing. So, some fundamental things um, about uh, deception here in America and, and why they teach it is they teach it because they know that they can control you. And the reason why they know they control you, they can control you, is because they write the laws. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of that kind of power. Remember about last year or a year, maybe two years ago, the fathers, when the Missouri State football team said they weren't going to play if that president remained the president of that school and that president was asked to leave? Well, there's a law against that now. You see, they try to be complete, but when they come into areas like that that are gray, they'll make up a law so that that doesn't work to their disadvantage. And understand how I said that. That doesn't work to their disadvantage. And the reason why they like that kind of control is because that allows them to stay in control. Now, one of the unique things that is happening, and was right before our noses, and we're not even focusing on it, is the fact that now have you noticed that people are beginning to open the discussion of race? Now, it's not because they want to. It's because of the anvil that goes back and forth is now starting to lean. But when it starts to lean, that means it's an unbalance, and they sense it. And they feel that one of two things. Either they can try to rectify it or to destroy the dynamic altogether. Now, right now, more people think they can rectify it. So they're trying to move in that direction before it gets too out of kilter. But there is also a group that feels that rectifying it would be eliminate all that are against it. Their control, that is. And they have decided that if that is a course of action that they are going to take, 
that they wanted to be prepared for, i.e., the last two years. Over the last two to three years, you have seen a heavy army of a part of American society that really has no need to fear. But fear is perpetuated because it allows those people in control to have the leverage they want to be able to control the way the pendulum swings. And the reason why they want that is because that way, if they can't purchase what they want, if they can't manipulate what they want, if they can't scare you in to what they want, they know that their last order or business may be to eliminate. And they do have an agenda for that. So let's not take any of what we say lightly. And uh, when I say they have an agenda for that, I mean they literally, and this is part of law, that if we've reached a point where there's a disturbance that they feel is going to threaten their way of life, they're prepared to eliminate the whole world. I know that might sound a little harsh and shocking to you, but that's what they are prepared to do. Unless that certain percentage that they think that they are being able to manipulate begins to realize, you know what? We may be different colors, but we're all in the same boat. And as they begin to bring that to light, and they begin to give momentum, and they begin to pick up a louder volume, as well as the crowds, when I say pick up a louder volume, I mean people are going to start gravitating to the idea. They're going to literally take the leverage away from those people who are supposed to be full of the strength of maintaining control. This is why we have to have the sensory perception to be able to put ourselves in the right place at the right time. Now, the right place at the right time may be in your community. It may be to serve the purpose of the city in which you live. It may be to serve your family. But you must have the perception to be able to pick up on it so that you are prepared when it happens. That's why one of the cats were revered in Egypt because literally somebody may pick up something on a cat that someone else may not have and just discuss it openly before you know it, they're putting a preparation in place because they may not have a total understanding of what was going on, but because there was a glitch that the cat's sensory perception allowed them to identify with, they can prepare. So that's why deception plays a great role in, a, in this so-called Western society of Westernism. And if you look at the prison industrial complex, the deception that they used was, we freed the slaves. They didn't tell about the 13th Amendment. See? So literally, they're giving the world the deception of freedom while they operate under the still the so-called slave patrol rules. And the sad part about it is that there are many people in America who really think they're free. And they literally will be people that will argue their perspective, even if they're wrong. Because they want to be able to sustain the relationship between oppressed and oppressor. You see, there has to be a communication between the oppressed and the oppressor, because that is how the understanding is articulated. When the oppressed become knowledgeable enough where they can literally go head to head with the oppressor, and you, you have seen it, you may not have identified what it was, but how you know that you've reached that point is because then now they want to shy away. They don't want to focus on what you're saying. They want you to go back to understanding the so-called rhythm of how things are supposed to be. Sadly enough, a lot of us do. They just go back. It's easier. And they expect that. Uh, to give you an insight on that concept of the oppressor and oppressor, there is a book out, and I really, I really encourage you all to get this book. 
is called white addiction. The oppressed in league with the oppressor by uh, Dr. Fox, Ph.D. He's a psychologist and he does a phenomenal job at allowing us to be able to identify our behavior patterns that work against us, how to be able to articulate ourselves in a reverse manner so that we don't have to be angry when we see our truth, but we bring it to their attention so they'll know what that truth is. So naturally, you know me, I'm going to, I'm going to test this theory. So over the weekend, I went to a local food store or something, and I, I bought a, a gluten-free beer. There was a young man in front of me. He might have been, uh, I would say, 19 or 20. But he could have been older, don't get me wrong. But the lady came over to him, and she said, oh, okay, she rung him up and let it go. It came to me, and she said, uh, can I see some ID? And I said, but you didn't ask him for ID. She said, oh, yes, I did. You didn't see it. I said, no, you didn't. Because while you were over there helping that customer, I see him standing here with two tens in his hand and that bottle, that, that six-pack of beer. And he seemed to have known you. I said, so I really didn't pick up on it until you asked me for my ID. And then you're going to turn around and tell me that you asked him, but I didn't see it? No. I very clearly seen it. Now, it doesn't have to be an issue, but if we want to make it an issue, you know everything is on camera at these places nowadays. So she played it off and everything, and I played it off. You know why I played it off? Because it was about bringing it to her attention, to let her know. See, they think that they could tell us anything and we believe it. So when she said, oh, yes, I did, you didn't say it. No, you didn't, and I explained why. And when she began to think in reverse, he gave her two pens. You see, so when you state it in reverse, you have to make it so clear that it's undeniable to them. Because, see, now you're beginning to force them to see that you are not as naive as they would like to think that you are. And the reason why is because then they go on doing that to the next person. Because they think you're going to believe whatever they say. I don't. And I let them know I don't. Needless to say, my wife didn't like it. She called the manager back later on that day. That went in another different direction. But the reason why I'm pointing this out to you is because one of the psychological setbacks in our interaction with the oppressor is that we allow the oppressor to determine the narrative. And then we submit to the narrative. No. Always bring to his attention in reverse so that he could see that you have a clear understanding. And Now, even if nothing comes out of it, you've called a disruption in the social order in the way that person thinks. Because, see, one of the unique things about this whole thing is as we got to the end of the conversation, uh, the, the young lady was, was interrupted by another, probably another person she works with, and she said, just calling over the counter, did you see what health, what they took over health care? So evidently, I'm thinking they're talking about their money. And she said, yeah, I don't pay for it. And then she turned to me, and the other girl walked away. But that told me that she doesn't have health care on her. You see what I'm saying? So I'm naturally, me being as perceptive as I am, I said, you know, it's interesting we're in the same boat. She said, oh, uh, I said, yeah. She said, what is that? You don't have health care? I said, no, I have health care. But... If you don't have health care, they will charge you a fee when you do your taxes because you don't have them. Or they won't charge me because I do. Have a good day. And I walked off. You see how the dynamic works. You have to bring it back to a level which they could understand. Did I know that the girl was going to come up and say that? Absolutely, I did. But but the way she acted told me she didn't have it because she chose not to. So I also brought to her attention that if you don't have it, you'll pay that fine because that's everybody does. You see, that made our playing feel equal regardless of what her frame of mind was. And then when she came back, well, you don't have anything to know, I have it. You see, the whole thing is that they want us to be under the illusion 
that we don't understand. We understand very clearly. Now, that's just a little step. And be able to gauge your mindset to think in terms of your best interest, even if you're just making a point. And the reason being is because now, anytime you get in a situation, even if you overhear something, you don't have to say anything, but your mind is thinking in reverse to what it used to before. So we're setting things in motion to work for our favor when it comes to elaborating on different things. I do suggest everybody go out and get that book because it's definitely going to be one of those, what it was called, fundamental foundational tools. It will be. Because right now, though, uh, Dave's covered a lot of points with you. One of the things he hasn't told you is that this, what's going on in the world now, is a clash between two great financial systems. The old school Rothschild system and this new system being implemented. Now, what makes it more powerful is that it's implemented and it's backed by gold. Now, was the old original Rothschild system was also backed by gold. But they got so zealous and greedy with it that when they were taken off the gold standard, they took away the priority of what that meant, where the new standard isn't. So in initiating it with the new standard, people were saying, look, I'm not going to do business with a promise. I'm going to do business with gold. So that's another part of the transformation that's going to happen. And as that happens, you've got to be awake because I'm going to tell you something. It's going to affect those other people who think that they're in a position of authority and power and privilege more so than you. Why? Because you know how to deal under diverse circumstances. Do you realize that when the stock market crashed, how many people just killed themselves? Because they couldn't bear living without. And you see, we may not actually live without, but we have learned to live with very little. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of these things that are happening, we're going to have to sharpen our extrasensory perception so that we can see them and we can utilize them to our advantage. That's one of the reasons why Tando Radio has so much of a diversity. Uh, when you hear Dave talk, he talks about how money works in the world, but not really money, currency. Well, not really currency, precious metals. You get that. I took you from the deception of what they call money to the idea of money, which is currency, which already has all it written, a note, so it's really not money. You see what I'm saying? So two precious metals which is the substance of exchange because it retains its value. So we're growing, but we have to be able to identify what we are, where we are, and how we articulate it in every circumstance. And why? Because it works to your advantage. Because when things work to your advantage now, all of a sudden you can see how you can work your way in and out of the system. And believe me, it's not going to be easy. One of the things that uh, my wife and I were talking about, we, we over the weekend we, we purchased another animal. Why? Because we have small animals. We have Yorkies. And she wants to go back into breeding, and we're going to come off the road in a few months or whatever. So we're putting our plan together. So when we do come off the road, that we'll be able to have a sustained income on several levels. So one of them, uh, we're, she's, we're going to go back to breeding, and we're going to breed... Yorkies, and we're going to breed. Uh, this is a unique animal. These are black sable German shepherds, a very unique breed of German shepherd that actually has a vocabulary of 100 to 100 to 150 words. Very trainable and one of the most versatile military animals ever produced. His father is a German descent, I mean from Germany, and literally we got in the ground floor something that worked to our advantage. So, and moving forward, in the future, we're going to get back on the farm. We're going to go ahead and focus on bringing that up and uh, doing organics. And one of the side streams are going to be we're going to breed again. And uh, it's brought my wife joy many times, and it's also given her a great uh, understanding of this process to the degree where she's quite proficient, as well as, should I, I say, on the level of most professional breeders, although we haven't looked at our what we do on that stand on that level. 
So when we discussed the type of dog we wanted to do, we wanted to get a working dog because we wanted something that was bigger and who we could train to be able to filter filter into those areas where our sensory positions are to our advantage. Because on the farm, we do have cameras, okay? And we are going to have other animals that would be alert, but we need animals that we can train that are going to do what we need them to do at the time we want them to do it. We want them to have aggression. We want them to be actual, and we want them to be knowledgeable. All these jerkies got to do is bark. That's all we require for them because, you know, that alerts us to something around us. Literally, this next stage of animal that we're training is going to go into an entirely different level of protection. Not only family protection and farm protection, but I'm going to train these dogs to be an extension of myself and the diversity of my thought process. Okay? So I'm trying to give you an understanding on how you can expand with what you have as long as you have a plan to get where you're going. And the reason why we chose this particular breed was because of the intellect and its uh, strong history. And uh, when you see them, you'll understand why they're called black sables. They're pure black. They stand and look exactly like a German Shepherd. Except, well, I can't even say except there are German Shepherds who get to be 110, 120 pounds. And they average, you know, the males average between 90 and 110, 120 pounds. And the females go anywhere from 70 to, to 90 pounds. So they get to be very big dogs, okay? But they're a unique breed, and we were fortunate to be able to put ourselves in a position to get one or purchase one. or, or But either way it goes. Uh, we're pleased with that. Now, I'm, I'm putting these things out to you because along the way, as you begin to prepare yourself, you might want to seriously consider what type of animal, if you want an animal. And so I know people who have birds because the birds, are, they holler out. They, they, it's just something to alert them. And our, your, our needs as, as, uh, as African-Americans are different from European needs because uh, one of the, uh, when I choose this bird very carefully, one of my friends who is a European has a, uh, a bird that is very loud. When it makes noise, everybody knows. But that's a key in his, a key part of his security. And it works very well for them. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times we may not perceive what it is that the danger is as quick as an animal does. And that's why their purpose has been served through history very completely. And most people who do have animals already identify with what I'm saying. So, uh, moving up to another area of perception is our environment. We need to be perceptive in our environment. We need to have a relationship with our neighbors. So if you don't know them, you need to. Go and knock on the door. How you doing? My name is so-and-so. And uh, this is a good time of year because you can introduce them to fruit or if you sow, you can introduce them to sowing. But you need to open the door to communication because you have to know what their mindset is. Are they someone who you can work with or are they someone you need to prepare that may see you as a resource for them? And the reason why I say this is because a lot of times the most naive thing can be your downfall. So we need to have a, a greater perspective of what we're trying to do and all of those who are included in what you're trying to do, as well as those who are clueless, because there are, there are a lot of clueless people out there. And actually, when you really get down to it, you're getting more information here on uh, Black Talk Radio, who equips you for almost anything. I mean, when I listen to the show, it's, a, it's historically conscious. Um, it teaches you about, uh, should I say, the prison industrial complex. It teaches you about how to find those like-minded people. It teaches you a lot of things to your advantage. And some of the shows uh, I started listening to was teaching me about business and business ethics and things that I think about in terms of what I'm trying to do and how does this fit, okay? 
a lot of times I can't use everything. You, you don't want to put more on your plate than you could really focus with and flow by. But you really want to expand your horizon so that you can be available. And I, I, I like to use my body in a lot of cases. When I say I like to use my body in a lot of cases, see, I, you, you feel that sun hitting your body, it's stimulating something. It's stimulating the energy that flows because, see, an energy, no energy, you breathe. And when it enters, it automatically starts to find itself in your system because that's what it does. It flows in your system. Now, your thought process has a lot to do with what it does there. But once the energy is in, there is a natural order that's going on inside of your body that your energy attaches itself to. So, therefore, if you need it in a, in a, in a moment, like if you just had to get up and run, that energy is there to give you the energy to run. If you need to stop and sit down, that energy is there so that you can uh, get as much out of that rest that you want. See what I'm saying? Um, we call it life force. The Chinese call it chi. The Japanese call it ki. Uh, the India, I'm not sure if it's called uh, prama or something to that effect. But it has a unique connection with our body. Because for those of you who know about the chakra session system, you have seven glands, and each one of these glands represents a chakra. Uh, for those of you, I really wasn't going to go through them, but I'll give you a quick understanding. You have the lower chakra, you have the solar chakra, you have the uh, crown chakra, you have the pineal chakra. All of these here are working in conjunction to your total function. Okay, there are seven main. There are really more than your sister than that. But this is just a main concept I'm giving you. If you do your own due diligence, you'll find I only named three or four of them, where there's totally a seven. But they work in conjunction with your spinal cord. Why? Because your spinal cord is a cap that uh, all of the canals in your body flow through. So if you look at the alignment of your body from your head down to the point of the highest point of your legs, in the of your legs, your chakra are already aligned. And literally, they some people call them central nervous systems or whatever. I don't get into that. I understand them for the purposes that I serve or that they serve me, so I speak. And uh, the reason why I point that out to you is because that is one of the most amazing functionalities of your body. Understand what I said? All of the canals flow through your, your, your spinal cord, but yet your chakras are in total alignment with your spinal cord. I'm hoping y'all are getting this. And the reason why I point that out to you is because your nervous system is intertwined. So there's a communication there. Okay? And in that nervous system, your indoctrine system is what is leading the process of work being done in your body, and all of them are attached to your organs and muscles. Everything is communicating. What is it communicating? It's communicating about the individual soul, your life force and energy, which I talked to you about, and your universal spiritual connection. I'm hoping that you all will understand how I said that because that makes us connected to something that is greater than ourselves. So if we're connected to something greater than ourselves, then we must have the ability to tap into that. Ah, which actually brings in a perception. If you can tap into something that you don't know about, then literally, if you grew to do the due diligence to know about it, it must be able to add something to you. And if your mind can expand to what degree you may be able to achieve what you may find to be totally impossible. Now, for those of you who think that I did not realize what I said, you may find that you can expand to the degree of what you once thought was totally impossible. I just threw once in that time. Because the reason why I wanted to put once in there, because now you begin to realize that there are things that you could do that are not totally impossible. Although they 
appear that way sometimes. And one of the things that I found out about that is that when I tap into it and begin to really learn, there's a plethora of information out there for you that helps you sharpen these things, okay? So uh, when I first uh, began to identify with it, I started doing Tai Chi. This was years ago. I started doing Tai Chi. And when I started doing Tai Chi, my body was coming alive in spite of what my mind was doing. Now, that's deep because I was learning basic body movements, and I really wasn't understanding the totality of the body movements, but my body was benefiting from the fact that I was doing these movements. So what's so unique about that is that I began to really get into doing these movements, and then I realized that I was getting not only better, but it was making me better. And then... I wanted to know more. What all could I do? So I started pushing my body and stretching and trying to build muscle and that sort of thing. I was a much younger man then. One of the best things about it was, as I began to expand, I began to see more of myself with a greater understanding. And I began to realize some of the things I didn't know before. I talked to you before about breathing and how many different ways there is to breathe. There's about 9 to 12 different ways to breathe. Some, and when you're really, really advanced, and some go as high as 15. But all of these things take training. You just don't do them because you read them. you got to practice them. Well, over the weekend, I had an opportunity to just forge around into another level of perceptivity. Because as you grow, you want to see what is else going on. So I got into looking at YouTube videos. And one of the YouTube videos I was looking at was about levitation. And it was phenomenal. Because there was three people. And one was on the ground with his hand up. Another one was sitting on his hand with his hand up. And the third one was sitting on his hand. And they were all off the ground. Now, you have to understand what I'm saying about the parameters of the mind. Westernism does not teach you that your body has this type of ability. But yet, they're using some of this same knowledge against us today. You talk about the music. You talk about the words. These are all aspects of spiritualism. Remember I told you about sound and vibration? These are universal laws that are being used against us that they thought we didn't know about. And the reason why they thought we didn't know about it is because when they came into the great libraries and stole all the books, they realized some of this stuff they would never be able to do. So what did they do? They tried to force people to convert to Christianity so that they can control them enough so that they can be able to utilize this knowledge. But it was their way of life. So a lot of them didn't realize the importance of it, but they knew the Christianity way was being turned on to them was not what they wanted to do. So many of them knew that in, in answering the question, this may be a great sacrifice. But they were willing to make that because in reality, they didn't believe that to be what Europeans believed it to be anyway. So make no mistake, at the cost of thousands upon thousands, or hundreds of thousands of deaths, it was it, it was put out that we get that knowledge severed down. They did not want you to have the ability to do something that they could not control, nor control you doing it. Think about it for a minute. What would be the limit of what you could do if your mind was not trapped in the confines of Westernism? What would be the ability of what you could do if your parents were teaching you something their parents taught them and all of a sudden you're getting information that's three and four generations old to incorporate in the knowledge that you're getting through your personal experience and can pass that on to your child. It gets real deep, y'all. Because, see, that's how 
a village was. Whatever your father did in the village, passed down to his son or his daughter. This is how it stayed in the family. So therefore, you've heard the term that when the elder died, it was like a theft of a library because that elder had so much information that he acquired over so many years. So that's what makes the uniqueness of us. Look, we're coming up on a break. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. I want you to stay right there, pick up your telephones, call me, ask me questions. i got a lot of things I still want to point out to you because I haven't gave you the idea of your uh, other systems of which are part of your body. So do stay tuned. Uh, do have your questions. Do give the phone call. And this is Brother Davis, so we'll be right back. Since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Listen. A lot of what I'm telling you, if you've heard this for the first time, don't be surprised. And if you haven't heard it for the first time, then you already have an idea of the type of uh, work that you may have been already initiated in your life. I don't know. But I do know this, that when I really started opening that door, I wanted to know more. So, like I told you this weekend, I was watching some videos. I told you about the guy about levitating. One that really caught my attention was, then these are all on YouTube. There's a yogi that's been practicing yoga for 40 years. This brother crawled into a 19-inch square. Well, I'm going to say 21-inch, but it was smaller than 24. He was 6'1". He crawled into this box. They closed the box. They put him and submerged him in water for three minutes. Well, it's a little more than three minutes. But three minutes itself is phenomenal. When he brought him out the box, when they took the box out of the water, and they sit it back on the stand, and they opened the box, he took his time, and he climbed out of the box. But before he got to totally out the box, he got his head out. And for about 20 20 seconds, 25 seconds, he came back to life. Understand what I'm saying? This man literally started breathing again. He got out, stood there for a minute so his body could adjust. And then they started to interview him. He said, and his son stepped forward and said, no, he won't ask you questions because his body is still adjusting to being the state to how I answer the questions and then they went to the sun but I'll point this out to you because there is no limit to what your body can do when you have trained it beyond your ability to understand the, the purpose because when he was doing this believe me he didn't see this as his ultimate 
gift. Matter of fact, he might just see this as something he wanted to show the world. He may have an entirely different agenda for the skill set that he has. But yet, Western Christianism teaches you that what you can't do instead of what you can do. I'm trying to get you to understand that your mind is your greatest asset. You can do whatever you want to do with the proper training. And a lot of times the proper training may just be something basic. The God said his father meditates in the morning for an hour and in the evening it depends. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, he meditates in the morning for an hour after he does his yoga. Then he goes on with his day, and he has a routine day. In the evening, when he came home to spend time and spend with his family, he spent some time in the evening, then he would meditate before bed. And he said, well, what do you mean it depends? He said, well, sometimes he'd meditate for an hour and, or maybe three hours. So we may go to bed and wake up and he's in bed in the morning. So the demand that he placed on himself was only limited by what he was trying to achieve. And when people seen him pulled out of this water, literally totally submerged in this box in this water, go to YouTube, you'll see it yourself. This guy comes out of the box. He takes a few minutes to bring his, rectify himself again. And I'm going to tell you something. It was, it's phenomenal. And you know what? You think about a people that must live in with a uh, uh, a gun in order to sustain a control that is already unnatural, then you could see that it's not that person is living their fear. So what if you just live the joy of life? You see, because this, this, this world here as we know it, we all know that one day somebody will be digging it up. So we cannot allow what is outside our bodies to control how we relate to our bodies because when we do that, then we allow what's outside of our bodies to take control. Look at the food supply. Look at the water supply. Look at the, the confusion in the atmosphere. Look at the agitation. All of these things are working against you. You know why? Because if you have time for you and you wake up that per we don't know who that person is that is lying inside you to be woken up. I'm telling you, I, I do my bit every day. I do my meditation. I do my, my internal exercises every day. I'm moving to the farm where I could really get elaborate with some of them and I could really take my external exercises to a new level and my internal exercises to a new level. I don't know where this is going to take me, but I know I'm growing at an alarming rate to me because I'm, I'm, a, day, I'm, a, I'm a Western educated person. So when I see some of the things that I can do now, it's like, wow. I mean, even when I look at myself, I, for those of you who don't know, I'll be 65. I mean, 64 man, this month. This is August, that's right. <laughs> this month. And I'm going to tell you, what my gift is to me from my wife and my grandchildren is that we are going to spend wherever we are during the eclipse together. And we're going to try to be someplace where we can literally see the light of the world go out because the sun is covered by the moon. And that two minutes and 30 or 40 seconds, I want to just be able to embrace my family in a different cosmic aura. Because it's only going to take place for a period of time. Now, 25, 30 years ago, that had no meaning to me at all. Now it's entirely different. Because now I'll be a week, this happens a week before my birthday. Energy right now is in total, uh, should I say, expansion. 
because I'm moving closer, the solar alignment's moving closer. So there's so many things that are happening around me and to me that I can identify. I couldn't begin to identify the things that I don't know anything about. And listen, I'm not exclusive. I am not exclusive. There is something happening to everybody. It's just that if you don't know how to identify it, you may miss it. Or you, some people may see it as something else altogether. But we are at an age, at a time, where we can grasp much more than we could ever thought imaginable when we open our minds to understand one basic thing, and that's us, our physical bodies. When that sun hits your body, you think, oh, it's warm. No, what's happening is it's being dragged, pulled inside your body, and it's actually nurturing your body, and it's making little uh, uh, spaces of energy. What are these spaces of energy? These spaces of energy are just places where energy is stored until you need it. And you know what's unique about it? It's just that that energy might sit there dormantly for as long as it takes. And if you have the ability to literally store that energy in some way or transfer that energy in some way, who knows what you can do with it? You see, they know more about us than we do because they literally got into libraries that were thousands and thousands of years old, could not understand it, so they stole it. And they've had it for hundreds and hundreds of years. So by now, even if you couldn't read the language, you will have been able to decipher some of the knowledge. And I believe that that's what they're using against us because of what I'm learning through my process. Is there someone uh, in queue? But I'm not unique. You have the same things happening in you, whether you want to identify them or not. And we identify them at different times, you see, because our growth processes are different. So, therefore, uh, you may identify yours. You may have been identified, or you may be identifying yours now. Well, you may see it as irrelevant now, and then later on, it begins to open your eyes because something happens that makes you say, hmm, or you run across a book that makes you say, wow, about we can do these? We can do these sort of things? Absolutely, we can. Do you know to this day they still don't know how the pyramids were built? So they, what did they tell you? Oh, aliens came to the earth. Yes, they came to the earth and they did all of that. That is a lie. Now, how can I say that that is a lie with such absolute confidence? Because the key brick in the pyramids is off maybe three to seven centimeters from perfect. That's a human error. Are y'all getting this now? So for those of you who don't know, no people, nobody at that time had the apparatus to pick up one of those rocks, precisely sand it, shined it, cut it, and put it in a place where it absolutely fits perfectly if every one of those bricks on the pyramid was done the same way. They were customized for a specific spot. Now they're telling you, ooh, the pyramids are humming. You bet they're humming. Because there's something going on in the cosmos. And any time that the world gets radical, there's something else going on that they think ain't going on. You see, they want you to think that they're, they're God. And if you don't believe it, look at any, any picture of what they call God. Look like them. Now, do the dynamic here. Why would it look like them? when they already know that the first people on the earth look like us. I'm hoping y'all getting that. Because I'm tapping into that extrasensory perception that is lying dormant in you so that when you start to really keel into it, you start to wake up things in you that you could not begin to imagine. You could heal yourself. You could heal others. You can feed yourself. You can feed others. 
we have become dependent on a system that is designed to kill us only because their fear of us is that great and if you hear them talk about it you would think we've given them something to fear us about and literally they have been the most destructive human to ever walk on this planet are you seeing the dynamic of deception here that's working to keep you in your box? Because if you come out that box, they don't know what your hereditary family skill was. What if you could fly? And you could fly as fast as your mind could think. You would have no limits. You could be beside them one minute and halfway across the world the next. And they don't know how you did it. But every time you step out in that natural source, you're getting energized, and they know it. Are y'all getting why they fear you then? Because I'm going to tell you something. I didn't talk about the exclusives. What are the exclusives? The exclusives are the things that make man, man, and woman, woman. The exclusives are the things that take a seat and you could go outside and look up in the universe and you see how all the stars are making that swirl, do you realize that when a woman is pregnant, that seed that's in her body is starting that same process? It's starting to turn the same direction that that, uh, that, that solar system is flashing to you in the galaxy. That seed is starting to turn in her that same way. You know why? Because it's the energy following the blueprint pattern. And it is a blueprint pattern because it only takes nine months, 40 weeks. And at the end of the 40 weeks, with just proper diet, proper food, minimal exercise, and an alertness of mind, you have a little human. And do you know at one time women would go out in the woods and they would have that little human by themselves and they would stay with that little human for the first three or four hours alone? That doesn't happen no more. Why do you think? Think about this. Why do you think now that right after you have a child in the hospital, they take that baby away? Oh, they're cleaning them up in front of you, but they take him away. There's something in that bonding process between that mother and that child that goes on in that first three to four hours that they do no longer have. And believe me, they always got a pur- they always got a purpose behind what they do. All the time. And all of these senses that are starting to come alive in you now, your smell, your taste, your touch, what if you're having a sense of perception? you never identify with. What do you mean by that, Brother Davis? What if one day you woke up in the morning and you could see and your eyes were closed and you could see everything clearly? And you got up and you walked across the room, you went to the bathroom, you sit there. Many of you do it because the mind has already placed the plan of your house in your head. So if that is your house in your head, what do you think is planted in the blood that has traveled through eons of time through maybe three, four, five mothers? It's you. There's a whole lot going on that we are not supposed to know anything about. But you know what? We're waking up to it. Do you realize that there was no such thing as a cancer about 70 years ago because this is a byproduct of something that's created think about it, it's created in industry now we have to understand that these things are all being done to keep us off the focus of truth the focus of truth lies within us but that truth may not be the same in each one of us it may be different but once we tap into it and start to converse we can see how they may come together and be part of a puzzle that is greater than our understanding at this moment but the more we develop the greater
greater the pieces of puzzle become together. And then we begin to realize, oh, wow. Now you're going to be angry because you waste time. But we don't really have the right to be angry. You know what? We really don't have the right to be emotional. You know why? Because it takes away from another aspect of what we could be doing with that time where we're emotional. And I know they try to tell you, well, women are emotional because they're nurturing. No. Women are emotional because that is the program they want you to run. But you can be nurturing. You can be compassionate. But most of all, if you're in harmony, I don't have to watch you and you don't have to watch me. I live the harmony concept. That's why I told you this whole concept of love. This is an unbalanced. It's keeping you unbalanced. Why? Because now all of a sudden you want to know if there's a person that there's an area of greatness. Well, I want to know what clear this clear this up. There shouldn't be an area of greatness in harmony. Harmony is rhythm. Harmony is music. Your bodies laying in bed beside each other are in harmony. And when you sleep, that harmony comes together in a manner that we have not uh, begin to realize. And you know you laid there and heard your, your your mate's heartbeat or you held your child and you felt the rhythm of your child breathing on your chest. Or you might have fell asleep and someone came in and you two were breathing in total harmony and that child was laying on you in a comfortable position to sleep. See, we're... we're, we're, we're right at the precipice. This so-called waking up thing, it's a joy to that person waking up, but it's a terror to that person who wants you sleep. And that's why they're doing the crazy things they're doing. And I mean crazy. And I'm going to tell you something. As we begin to walk this path and things start to come down the line, and they will, they think they're going to go according to the how they got it planned. That's like they, I said, they think they're gods. They're reversing everything that is natural in the universe. They are literally reversing the universal law. Now, we know karma is a universal law. Do you think there's going to be any repercussion out of this? Come on. We, as a people, we got to wake up and understand that we play a role in this process. It's not a subservient role, by no means. And guess what? The reason why they want you to say, pick a leader, pick a leader, pick a leader, is so that they can control your fear, so that when you pick somebody, they can kill that person. I don't have to say it again, because they've done it over and over and over and over and over and over so much that people don't even want to be leaders. So I always said the same thing. We are the generals. And when you're a general, you make decisions. And then you make decisions that's for the group, you are the general of the group. But you know what? Tribes were established for three reasons. One, there had to be a lineage of eldership. Two, that eldership had to be create, had to be connected to something that could fortify that image of eldership. Therefore, that's why there was always the connection between man and woman. Because if that woman was in an elder position, she may have to support that elder. But if she was in a elder position, she needed support too. But that meant there was a family connected to that. And every generation, that family would grow because that family, whatever kids they had, if they had three kids, then they had three more families connected. And if that, each one of those families had three, then they had, what, 12 more connected? You see, this? are you getting the dynamic of this? Because this is the stage that we are at right now. There is so much information that's flying around that's not necessary. You're not focusing on the things that are necessary. So they're putting us in, in cages of setback. They're causing disease. They're telling you, oh, this food is good. They don't tell you it's genetically modified organisms. Your body don't know what it is, and chances are if it's just dormant in it, it's going to turn into a cancer and one day kill you. No, they're not going to tell you that. Matter of fact, they've taken millions of dollars of your money so that you can't even identify which products are genetically modified. Think about that. They must really, really want to have control over you. Because guess what? You might make God 
and you can fly. Then what would you do? Because you know darn well. Can you imagine you go downtown all of a sudden, you just take off and fly downtown the main strip, then you just disappear? You realize your picture would be on every TV in the world? If they want you, they going to find you. I'm trying to point these things out to you, my brothers, because we are greater than the dynamic in which we live. And if you don't get this, that's fine. Because guess what? Death isn't what you think it is. Uh, it's not about heaven and hell. Really, it's not. I'm not telling you that because I, I want you to fall away from everything that you believe to be true. No. I'm telling you that because it's true. One day you'll find out. And when you find out, then you'll be in a better position to say, hmm, understand it and move on. Because in reality, a lot of people that are out here now are never going to believe these truths that you got on this show tonight. But do your own due diligence. I always tell you, look up um, human spirituality. Look up natural powers of the human being. If you really want to get deep, look up the levels of being. You see, because we're born like you're any other animal. Let me put this clear. I think I might have mentioned this before. But we have the ability to develop. So we're born human, but as we begin to grow, we take on the attributes of our, our the people who lead us. Okay, our examples. So if our examples are spiritual, you're going to be evolved in a spiritual manner. And as you evolve in a spiritual manner, you're going to realize that there's principles you must live by. And as you live by those principles, you're going to ask questions about them. And I'm examples are going to answer your questions. Now you are on the path of waking up to your divine self. When you are elevated to a point where you're no longer caught in the braces of knowledge and applied knowledge, your knowledge and your applied comes together, and you're applying what you know. And the example becomes yourself. Because... This is how you grow. And as you seek, there are sages. Now, say, what is a sage? A sage is an elder who's moved on. Or he may not have moved on. He may be somebody in your own neighborhood right now. But you go to and say, you know what? I, I got this problem. I just can't get my thirst my, 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 my thirst quenched. And they might ask you about that thirst and give you a direction and you follow that direction all of a sudden your thirst is quenched that's 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 the the job of the sage he's not supposed to lead you he's not supposed to take you by the hand he's supposed to help you find your path and when you find your path when every time you see him and you too may not even speak but what goes through you has nothing to do with anybody around you. Sometimes you just may embrace. They go in your different directions because his work is different than your work. But in reality, you're doing the same work. You have to understand that although we are in a war, it ain't always going to look like a war zone. And the war may not be on the outside. The war may be on the inside. But if the war is on the inside, I could tell you now, it's a glorious peace when you rest. You must find your way to your peace. But oh, is it glorious. Nothing can bother you. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can harm you. It doesn't make a difference what happens in the world doesn't disturb your peace and you can build on that because guess what regardless of how exhausted you get in your building process you can always go back to your place of peace for those of you who have never heard this before your place is waiting for you but you're going to have to take the path to find it and sometimes you choose the wrong path we're human that's why there's sages along the way that's why there's oracles of knowledge to open the door to your thinking so that you can be able to say, hmm, I 
tried that that way. That didn't work. Let me try this way. And then that way you try second works and you find yes. And you start moving along. This is Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. Look, we're coming up on the last break, y'all. Uh, pick up your phones. If you don't, you can't blame me. Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. Make Black Talk Radio your choice for digital black radio. New black media for the new millennium. Welcome back, welcome back. Listen, we're into the last, uh, into the last half hour. It ain't even going to be a whole half hour. So if you guys got any calls, you call them now because I'm going to tell you something. When I get done with the show, I'm going to relax a little bit. I'm going to read a little bit. Then I'm going to meditate and go to a far-off place. I'm in an astral travel mood tonight, so I don't know where I'm going to go, but before I go, I'm going to look back at myself because i got to make sure that nothing disturbs my peace. How, I, how do I do that? By making sure when I leave my body that my etheric self can see the calmness. Then I can go and do what I want to do and come back. One of the unique things about that is that I've chose to do that. There's no, there's no limits when you open yourself up to real truth. We live in this world of, of, of set things. See, when I say set things, I mean that things are in motion. Some of them have to do with you, some of them don't. But in reality, there's not much you can do about it. Because they're set things. You can do things about you, but you can't do things about the set things. Okay. People next to you and close to you, you can do things about that. But you can't do about nothing about those crazy politicians, nothing about those weird doctors. You know what I mean? You really can't do that because those people are living in what they call their reality. And they want their reality to be your reality. Why? Because it's confusion. And any time we are in confusion... We get lost. Why? Because it ain't ours. Think about it. It's not ours at all. Oh, we got to go through it. But when you go through it and you have an idea of who you are, some of the craziest things can happen and you can go, you ask yourself, is there anything I can do about this? I oh, know ain't nothing I can do about it. You keep on going. That's simple. Things I can do something about, I can't. I do. Yeah. You know, if you see an accident, you can make a phone call, call the police, tell them that sort of thing. But you get back to your face of peace, all you did is the best you can. That's all the, that's all the universe requires you to do. Best you can. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's not done with you. Even if, 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 if it's a major war and dollar drops, everything falls down, and they, even if they try to subjugate the whole world, that's outside of you. Inside of you, you can find joy. Because guess what? This stuff, is, this stuff will find its own. It, it, will, it will find its way out. It will find a solution somewhere. Whether you're here to, to experience it or not, it will. But here's the best part. When you find you and know you, when you find that place of peace and know that place of peace, you can literally teach those people who love you enough to want to know, what is it about you? I hear it all the time. People say, you know what, every time I talk to you, you're in a good mood. <laughs> don't, you don't disturb my joy. I mean, this is not something that's trying to happen. It's for years. My wife used to say, you know what, I, it's remarkable. I don't know how you do it. Maybe it's easy for me. I mean, I love you. I'm sharing my life with somebody I love. I mean, <laughs> get better, better than that. I mean, you understand the dynamic that's going on here. When you are literally in your place of peace, and you know how to move back and forth into that place of peace, and you're starting to develop, you start 
got to elevate yourself above all of this stuff that's going on in the world. Because literally, you can't make a call to Trump and say, stop acting like a fool. And if you did, you probably wouldn't get through to him anyway. To understand what I'm saying about working with what you got. Because what you got is phenomenal. Believe me. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing to me sometimes. And me and my wife are getting these conversations, you know. Well, how do you feel this? How do you know that? Maybe I don't even know. I just don't let it bother me. You know, well, you know, sometimes I feel like I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta be a part of it. Well, you can. I, I have nothing against that. I mean, as long as you're happy. Well, sometimes I do things to help people, and I do. Don't make me happy. You made me. You shouldn't do it. But I know one thing, and she knows. My wife can get up tomorrow morning and wait till I get up. And I'll get up. I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is see you. As soon as I say, good morning, Doc. How are you? You sleep well? Now, I'm gonna tell you, I'll rest every time I lay my head down. This is it. It's easy. When you find your place of peace, none of this stuff. None of this stuff matters. The only thing that matters is what you put your time in. And all you do is the best you can and, 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 and go back to your place. As often as you like. And enjoy being what you want to be in spite of what's going on around you because you're important but if you ain't important to you enough to go and do these things it don't make no difference what people tell you anybody who's seen a picture of me and my wife and I'm going to tell you something that I know that y'all going to know this too as I tell you we look like royalty always you know why because I feel that way in my mind and it comes out in what I do. And people literally, I, me and my wife have been places, and there are people walk up, can I get a picture of you? I don't know these people. And you, but it doesn't bother me. They can't take away anything from me. They can always give me something, and maybe a little knowledge, maybe they'll spend a little time, maybe give me a coming new friend. I don't know. But I'm open to experience. Because when I go to my place of peace, that may be one of the jewels that I put in my secret place. I want to hold this memory here in you know, my secret place. Because that way when I want to visit, I go visit it. That's one of the things that we have to understand. All the stuff around us, the technology and stuff, this is the way you get away from you. Literally. I mean, you think about it. You're getting this thing, you're in the machine, all of a sudden you're looking down and you're doing this thing with your fingers again. Then you might be going ahead and doing, you might have a communication with the inanimate object but that inanimate object is visibly trying to get in your head. Oh, what got me was the, the, the day my wife had said something to me and the darn phone spoke up, gave her an answer. I could see that thing listening. They want to take from you whatever they can get. There's a reason for that. So if you tap into you, you're going to find out that what you got, they can never get. It doesn't make a difference how they try. They can never get it unless you give it up. So I'm telling you all now that your senses go far beyond this time and space in which we are in. And you can tap into it at any time you want to because you have that authority by birth. And you can literally learn and teach yourself through some things you can find in this millennium and some things in another millennium. Because if you become stronger, believe me, you can go further. You may not be able to see, but you may look to be able to watch and understand the process. And then when you practice the process, and you're beginning to understand what embryo breathing is, and you practice embryo breathing, and you find out, okay, I know how to do that there. And then intermittent breathing. And then you practice your intermittent breathing, and all of a sudden you become a uh, confident in your intermittent breathing and then say perfect example say you, you're going for a nice run and then you come back from the run and you want to be able to slow your oxygen intake down so what you do is you count one two three four and you breathe in you count out one two three four and you breathe out and you count you expand the numbers one two three four five six one two three four five six then you slow it down one two three four and all the time, you're breathing in the rhythm in which you count. So you're changing the dynamic 
of your physical body on the inside because you are taking control. And then at some point, we just want to sit down, and you're going to breathe deep, and your chest won't expand, your body won't move. And that breathing deep, that air going in might take 25 or 30 seconds to get it all in. And then you start breathing out as slow as you can. Oh, in the beginning, yeah. it might take it. All right, somebody in the queue? Yes. Okay, sister, introduce yourself and... And tell us where you're from and what is your question? My name is Erica Davis, and I'm <laughs> in uh, Ohio right now with my husband, but I'm not with him exactly, um, so I'm on a different phone. So I just thought I'd call in. Since you didn't get any other calls, I just thought I'd call in and say hey. But I just wanted to piggyback on a couple things that you said, if you don't mind. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I wanted to piggyback and let the audience know the important view that mentioned about how children, uh, babies, infants, when they're born and they're separated from their mothers, one of the most important things is the cord blood the, um, from, the, um, from, the, um, from the uterus when, when, from when the baby is born, you know, it's co connected to the placenta. And one of the things, that, that cord blood is so unique because when babies are born, they are 100% alkaline. That's the only time in your whole entire existence that you will be 100% alkaline. And as you grow older, you will become more acid and you'll get a balance. You know, some people are more acid or more alkaline than others, but at this point, uh, you're just like a watermelon because watermelons, if you ever eat a watermelon, they are 100% alkaline, or at least they should be the ones with the seeds. But I'm just saying that the baby, when it's born, that cord blood is so important. They probably get millions of dollars for cord blood and for placentas. That's probably the most unique organ of the body. And uh, it probably has properties beyond our wildest dreams that they use it for. And I know they use it for different types of cosmetics and for burn victims and for um, they, they separate some of the plasma, but they, that's one of the reasons why I think they take the babies right away uh, from the mothers because of that cord blood and the reference that it has to the, uh, to the body. And like, like you said, personally, uh, some women will insist to have the babies in the room with them, but somewhere along the line, before they are discharged, they do separate the mother from the baby. It's incredible that they do that. And who knows what they do. I don't know if they put a microchip in their foot or whatever, but they seem to always want to uh, separate them for at least a few minutes, even if the parent the other parent goes to the nursery to see what they're doing. For some period of time, that baby is removed from the eyesight. And even if you have babies at home or maybe in the car on the way to the hospital or whatever, they insist that they you bring them in so that they can do their, you know, check of them or whatever. I don't know what they do. There's something, I think, sinister because... It's just phenomenal how they just have to have this baby separated from its mother uh, unless you're really having the baby at home and you just kind of don't report it right away. Somewhere along the line, you got to report it, though, to get a birth certificate. So I did want to piggyback on that. I also wanted to say about the eclipse that, yes, everybody on the call, if you can, you, you might not be in the area to actually view the eclipse, but at least take time and uh, meditate around that time, a couple of days before, a couple of days after. Uh, you can also view it on TV. It's going to be on every network. Uh, that might be one of the better places to see it uh, if you're not on the totality line. And if anybody is going to be viewing it uh, live, you have to have special glasses. There's no getting around that because it's a couple of days after the eclipse, there's going to be many people going to the optometrist because their eyes are going to be watering and burning and um, might not go into blindness, but you will be affected if you don't have glasses on. Hello, hello, Ms. Davis. I can I ask one more question? Did anything about the show that you thought was a little bit exaggerated? Exaggerated? No, no. Everything seemed like it was on point. You do wake up every morning with a good attitude. I don't know how you do it. I'm not going to sit there and say I am the same, but you are very much out of the 30 plus years that I've known you. You are very much who you are, That whatever the audience is experiencing, experiencing as who you are as a person, it's, I can verify 
you're very um, uh, courteous and very uh, mindful and very humble and uh, very, very, very seldom in a bad mood, very seldom, you know, a woe is me moment or anything like that. Always looks at the glass overflowing. You know, people say, is the glass half empty or half full? Well, you'll say the glass is overflowing. Some people don't even see it that far <laughs> into the future. But, you know, you're very much like that. Now, you know, now are you perfect and things like that? Absolutely not. Nobody is perfect. But you are, um, I see you every day going forward to have a better understanding of your purpose and um, of your um uh, you know your destiny and meditating to understand and bring all that full circle. Yes, I see all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Thank you very and, much and like you said, and like you said about the dollar and everything. Uh, you know, it might not be Doomsville coming, but there is. A, a, and do your own por, por, uh, portion. If it's preparing or just being more knowledgeable or gathering your family together or just giving a better understanding of where everybody is at in case something, you know, the shoe does drop. You don't have to go looking for your children. At least you have a whereabouts of where they are. I do believe, I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be Doomsville, but I do believe and I do see something over the horizon coming. Can't really put my finger on it, but millions of other people feel the same way. And I do think that just at least having your loved ones within ear shy or our uh, vision shy, or at least to be able to communicate them if all levels of communications are okay. um, disturbed. Okay, listen, we are at the end of the show. Uh, we, Dave, let me turn it back over to you. Thank you, darling. I'm looking forward to your return and um, everybody else. I love you. Every time I'm on here, it's an act of love, and I believe that we are going to go a lot further than we have begun to be able to imagine. This is Brother Davis on a wise Wednesday. Let me turn it back over to you, Dave. Peace. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Brother Davis. Uh, so I missed a portion of it. I was trying to take care of some, some business. I know it was a great, great show. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. It's never goodbye. We've got to get ready to get out of here. It's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. And before you can ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. Much love, much respect. Brother Braggs, if you're there on the line and can't see the board, if you would chime us out, and we will all see you later. Peace. Much love, much respect. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, peace. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. 